today, let's talk about yoga. How many of you here have actually performed yoga in your life at some point or the other? Everyone, right? So, as Indians, we have this inculcated inside us since ages. But what about the US or the people in the West? They have started inculcating these qualities of yoga from us. Yoga has a lot of benefits. We know it. Just to, just to point out a few, yoga has a very specific impact on your brain. When you perform yoga, it actually thickens your cerebral cortex, the part of brain required for high level of learning. It also helps in increasing the neuroplasticity, something that is required to learn new things and helps your brain evolve. So why suddenly today we are talking about yoga? In India, yoga came like 5000 years ago. It was first mentioned in one of the Vedas called Rig Veda. However, let's just leave India for a second and focus on the people who have adopted this from us. Talking specifically about the United States, people are actively performing yoga there. 8.7% of the America's population is actually performing yoga, which contributes to 20 million of the entire population. And the fascinating fact is, they spend around $12 billion every year to buy yoga equipment, spend on yoga classes, and stuff like that. Well, that's not the problem. The problem is, out of those 20 million people who perform yoga, 7,400 have reported injuries while they perform yoga. One out of every 1,351 people who perform yoga in the US have reported an injury. Now that's a problem. That's something to solve. The technology that we're using to solve this problem is called as machine learning. Now machine learning has been there since a while. It started uh, in around 90s. But something started in 2006, which revolutionized the entire field of machine learning. And that we call as deep learning. So a couple of scientists back in 2006 thought if you could replicate the most powerful computing machine known to human, and that is a human brain. So what the thought is, we know that our brain is built about several neurons, a billion of neurons, and they're connected with something called a synapses. If we could replicate this entire model in our computer, then we could have an algorithm which can perform like a brain. That exactly is what called deep learning. This is an example of one of the algorithms called as artificial neural network. This is a computer replica of a human brain. In this you can see the first layer is built up of several neurons. It is called as the input layer. And then the next layer is called as the output layer. In between we have something called as hidden layers. So the exact computation that takes place in the entire model is in, that, in those hidden layers. So for example, if you want to classify an image of a cat, you supply that image from the input layer, you expect the output layer to give you a label which can tell you CAT cat. And how this model learns is whether the, that image is for cat or not, that happens in that hidden layer. Now this is a bit more complex example of a neural network. This is called as convolutional neural network. This is specifically used to solve the problems related to computer vision be it image or a video. So in this example, you can see from the input side, we have an image of a car. That car, as it moves down different number of layers in the neural network, is being synthesized and features are being extracted. Features, for example, edges, colors, pixels, depth, and other things like that. Every hidden layer inside a neural network has some task to perform. Every hidden layer is supposed to learn some or the other feature from that, mod, from, from that image. And as you go towards the end, trans, passing through all these hidden layers, towards the end, the last layer will learn that this image looks like a car and will give you a label which can tell it's a car. But how does this solve the problem of yoga? How can we create an algorithm which can help people reduce the injuries they've reported? Let's assume there's an algorithm fitted inside a television or a huge screen and you're supposed to perform yoga sitting in front of that screen. What if that solution consists or it knows how all the right yoga poses look like? And while you're performing yoga, that machine has been trained on millions of yoga videos and images. And when you're performing yoga in front of the television screen, it can actually tell you real time whether your pose or your angles are right or wrong. This is the solution. Now imagine all those people in the US performing yogas in front of their televisions or huge big screens in their gardens or auditoriums and that 
particular, you got them in the television screen, can detect every single person in that, in that auditorium and can tell which person is doing correctly or in a wrong manner. But what exactly is that uh, big solution box we're talking about? What exactly is the algorithm you're talking about? There's something called as pose estimation. So when you talk about this solution in a much deeper sense, you can identify that in order to tell whether a person is performing yoga in a better way or not, there are two things involved in it. One is, for example, suppose there are five people performing yoga in front of a television screen. The first task is you need to find all those five people. You need to identify those five people in that image or a video. Once you have identified all those five people, the next task is to tell whether they are doing that pose right or not. So the first part of it has been addressed by a solution called as pose estimation. So there are several algorithms that can help us detect poses or help us estimate poses. But one of the very accurate one came out last year in 2017 by a couple of researchers in the Carnegie Mellon Robotics Institute. So this is the sort of solution I'm ta talking about. In this example, you can see there are n number of people performing different, different tasks and our algorithm can detect their poses real time. And mind you, this is not tracking. We're not tracking their poses. We're actually estimating their poses. So if you increase the number of people in that image or increase the frames per second, we can still detect that many poses in the video. So now, how exactly are we doing this? There are several algorithms, as I said. The first algorithm I'll talk about is called as top-down approach, in which first you identify every single person in that image, and then slowly you start identifying their poses one by one. In our case, we use something called as part detection plus part association. So rather than detect, uh, detecting every single person in that image, what exactly we are doing is, we are detecting every single body part in that image. For example, if there are like five people standing in an image, we'll detect all the possible shoulders, then all the possible elbows, all the possible wrist, all the possible knees and the feet. And then, so that is called as part detection. And the next task is part association. So once you have detected all the right elbows and the right uh, shoulders, the next task is you will combine all those, edge, all those shoulders and the right elbows. That's our approach. So first, you identify all the right body parts and then slowly you start combining them. And then finally you get the pose of each and every single person standing in that image. Now how do we do this? Now, as I said, a neural network is built up of several hidden layers in between. The more number of hidden layers in between, the much complex task it can solve. So in this case, we are using several hidden layers in between to detect each and every body part. So in this, in this case, you can see we, have we are detecting right shoulder, right wrist and right knee. And that is fed to the next stage. And then slowly and slowly, you start focusing on one specific body part. So in this case, you can see initially we are starting to detect right wrist. So there are several spots which are predicted to be the right wrist. And slowly and slowly as you move on in deeper in the neural network, towards the end, it will understand, okay, this is what exactly a right wrist looks like. And this step is performed for every single body part, nose, neck, right shoulder, elbow, or wrist. And then comes the part association part, wherein once you have detected the right body parts, you have to associate them. And for that, we use something called as part affinity. Because, for example, there are two elbows and two wrists in an image. How would you know which elbow to connect with which wrist? See, there are n number of possible cases. In this case, there are four points, there are four possible connections. So what we do is, we rate or we give a part affinity score to every connection. And then, whichever connection has the highest score, we consider that to be the right association. And we repeat this step one by one, and we get the entire pose. So it's a combination of part detection and part association as you can see in this image. And that's how the output looks like. However, this is just the part one. In this case, we have only identified the right poses or the poses of people inside the image. So for example, there are 10,000 people performing flash mob in front of a television screen or in front of a camera. Our algorithm can rightly detect all the people who are dancing in front of that image real time. Now comes the next part. Once you've detected all the poses, you want to detect which are the right poses. Which means your algorithm has to be trained on several million of yoga images and yoga videos. So that once 
your algorithm is able to detect the, how many people are there in the image or the video. The next part is to tell whether they're performing yoga in a correct manner or not. So now there have been several use cases, several examples of this algorithm. People have been trying to do, achieve this uh, in various different ways. However, a very recent advancement came from Facebook wherein they introduced something called as dense pose. So dense pose is an algorithm which not only detects your parts, which not only estimates your poses, but it also helps in 3D modeling. Which means, in this example, you can see if there's an input image, it will detect the right pose, and once it, had, it has detected n number of people in an image, it will also estimate a 3D model of that image. For example, this. So not just pose estimation, but also 3D modeling of it. Now, what are the applications of this? There are equally bad and good applications of this. Now, talking about the bad applications, you must have heard that people now start to replicate celebrities' images. Just by using their images, they can create an entire video of them. This is what is, this algorithm is doing. So just by using your image, I can create an entire video of yourself. However, the good part about this algorithm is, for example, suppose there is some robbery or theft happening, and your CCTV camera captures only a single image of the, of the thief. Now, by using this algorithm, we can construct the entire body structure, entire posture of the, of the thief, how it looks like. So there are several use cases, several examples of these uh, algorithms, these pose estimation algorithms, depends how you use it. So there's a lot more to discover. The project on which I am working with my team at MIT are actually trying to solve, not just solve the yoga problem, but further ahead, we're also trying to solve the problem of depression. Imagine if you have an algorithm which knows how does a person walks when he's in depression. And then, just by identifying that, we can tell by, by the way you walk, we can tell are you depressed or not. All these are applications of this pose estimation. So yes, deep learning is here to stay and it will stay for a while. People are going crazy about deep learning, not because of the technology. They're going crazy about it just because of its use cases. There's several different use cases, right from, right from space tech to, to healthcare, to education, to yoga. Thank you very much.